the games are the this chapter of the game is already over. They won. The, it's it's over. The European Union is going down. Germany by itself, even though it is doing well, cannot support Greece. Italy. And it's designed to pull them down in the end. Absolutely. It's always invest more so it doesn't sink. And then they say invest more so it doesn't sink. Invest more so it doesn't sink. That's the trap how they, you know, basically uh, salami slice uh, the yes, whole yes, situation. Yes. Now, there's some good, uh, good news in this. First of all, not all the countries are playing the game. And I got to spend a day in Iceland. And there are 326,000 people in Iceland. It was, it was very, very well educated. The people are great. But they deregulated the banks, and they created, I think, $28 billion worth of debt, and then tried to pile it on the people. And the people revolted and the people for a year. revolted and said, hell no, kicked out all the politicians and said, this is not our debt. And then it, the, Iceland was in the news big time, and then suddenly nothing's there. Because they began to win. And then what did we discover? It was true. 90-plus percent of the debt was not theirs. Yes. It was the private banks that had bought off their ministers. Four private banks. That, and, and some of these banks were little bitty offices controlled by a you know 20 15 20 people and and I was talking to a lot of people in Iceland and when they first started doing it they'd walk into a room and there'd be 35 high priced lawyers not just from Iceland but from Germany from England from New York that were all trying to stare them down but to they still have little viking blood in them they called the bluff they called the bluff and they said not no but heck no and so you know what? All, we can do the same thing. These derivatives are not our debt. They're being sloughed off. But that's my right point. Yes. Ireland is a success story. Uh, they're, they're doing great. Everybody's moving there. And yes. as soon as they sign the EU uh, Lisbon Treaty, as soon as they signed on, you know, they had to bring it forward twice. Right. Overnight, they said, you're now bankrupt. You've yes. signed on to the euro's debt. Yes. And, and then their bankers, their private uh, uh, Federal Reserve head, came out and said, well, this is wonderful that we're signing on to this debt and ruled by foreign banks now. They yes. actually say it, trying to say it in plain view, like, well, you're a guy in a suit. You know, uh, we'll be your slave. Same thing with Greece. So, so if it's anything, it is the chutzpah, uh, the hubris. Uh, I, I mean, it's just incredible. And, and, and it's all by design. I mean, anybody who has... Any sort of objective, investigative knowledge could see that not just six months ago or a year, but two or three years ago, this train was going off the tracks, especially with Greece, and then with Portugal, and then with Ireland. But their scam is, knowing it's an impossible to pay back black hole that's fraudulent, give us more power, give us more power, Absolutely. things get worse. Okay, we'll fix it, give us more power, give us more power, then it gets worse, give us more power, yes, give us yes, more sir. power. How long can that work? Well, it can work as long as the people are still in the matrix and as long as they're still mind controlled because the economy right right what we have right now is a total ponzi scheme this thing that we call money is just paper and ink it has no value this whole thing called sovereign debt it's it's all an imagination it's like the man it's like the wizard in the wizard of oz he controls the whole town through images and smoke and mirrors and it clearly, as we've talked before, real money has value, gold and silver, because it stores Private value. property. Private property, hard Hiding. assets. But notice now, a piece of land, you pay a property tax. It's really a feudal rent. You don't really own it. Uh, gold and silver are one of the few things you yeah. can still physically hold. Then there's physical power. Uh, you know, there's the Second Amendment. All of these real things that a freehold, free yes. man or woman has are under assault by the globalist, and it's a simple corporate takeover model. Anything yes. that stands alone, anything that's independent, is an enemy of this globalist board. Uh, the course. family, national sovereignty, uh, ideas, health. Uh, this is literally a global spirit of destruction. Look, we're at the end game. I mean, you and I have been talking about this stuff for a long, long time. And the stuff that we talked about 15 years ago 
it's like it's so mild in every not only every year every month we become aware of more and more and more and more and more the game is all over as we know it just like in the movie inception the walls are coming down and that's okay but the most important thing is that we as sovereign divine human beings not slaves to the corporate interest but as sovereign free loving people have to step up and take our power nobody's gonna come in and save us because if Nobody we don't is. because if we don't tell folks where this road leads well it's at the very best it's total complete slave we're already most of our brothers and sisters are already slaves to the to the man but we're talking about mass not maybe not extinction but mass wiping out of 60 70 80 percent of the population and this sounds really radical but this is their own plan now they say world government is basically the slaughterhouse building yeah. and, and they have to finish it before they run us through it you know the the souls the beings whatever you want to call them the oligarchy the plutocracy the power elite the illuminati this handful of people views us as cattle or and they're in such separation consciousness but you know what we don't have to play their game we're winning even though th things on the outside in the newspapers on nbc appear to be getting worse and worse we're winning twenty years ago we couldn't have had this discussion i talking about the federal reserve was like you were a crazy person now wherever i go people say hey man i saw you on the show i saw you on the alex jones video i know i've read your books we know, let's talk about this more and more people every day and you know the book the hundredth monkey that talks about at first if one or two percent of the population believes something new they get laughed at or put down but if five or six percent of the population get it and it's true then everybody gets well they, they just said a big university study came out two weeks ago that if ten percent believe something and 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 keep pushing it the rest will adopt it absolutely and that's why the globalists are so afraid they're a tiny minority who have decided to join pure darkness for 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 simple temporal power absolutely instead uh, and literally what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul of course and it's only up to us that literally are tuned into the wider universe who see really how stunted the little man behind the curtain is yes. it's actually you know years ago i hated the globalist now i i i i, I, I cry in my soul yeah. to look upon them because these are punched twisted uh, vampiric creatures they are and 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 we have to see them as reflections of our darker self but at the same time realize that each and every person just like Gandhi said when he went to India he you know he realized has the that seed of the universe within them he said every person has the seed of the universe within their soul and every person listening to this show they've already start waking up and many of the people who listen to the show are totally awake. And that's why Cass Sunstein at the White House admits they inject infighting and fake conspiracies and hatred to, to get us to fight with each other so people don't feel that magic. A absolutely. But the magic is growing. More and more people are waking up to the political, the economic, the cultural lies of the of the predominant media but what's even wilder is this game is bigger than just the economics or the political it's a spiritual choice that we have right now and you know what I used to wake up really scared about this. I'd wake up in the middle of the night back you know 10 15 years ago think they're coming to get me and they could have but I truly believe in the Creator and I believe in protection. I know you've got protection. I know you talk about this all the time. And you wouldn't be here if you didn't have protection. And most of goodness will overcome. We are good people, the good people, and we're all good, but waking up to the goodness and the strength and the sustainability and the awareness and the joy that we have inside of us quit playing their game George incredible uh, in, in the final summation 
we should feel blessed to be in this great crossroads. Yeah. We are living in a time when the entire future destiny of this species that is only a seed right now is going to sprout into the universe. And, and, and the technocrats even write about it. They hate the idea of the general population, humanity, really spreading its wings. They have had a glimpse of the universe, and they seek through envy and jealousy to hoard it. It's up to us that know the truth to try to unlock minds so that they can see the wider universe. And undoubtedly, it has been quite a saga uh, in this awakening. And, you know, there is a quickening in the awakening. And yes. I really appreciate you joining us. Of course, one of your books is 9-11, The uh, Great Illusion, Endgame of the Illuminati, Our Choice, Fear or Love by George Humphrey. George, thank you so much. In, in, in a 60-second summation, any other points you'd like to add? The window is, oh, this is a magical time to be alive and be on planet Earth. An incredible time. And there's two reactions. We can re retract in fear, which is what they're doing, putting out fear, 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 bad food, chemtrails, all this stuff. And I understand that. Or we can connect with our higher spirits, our higher beings, create community, take good care of our personal bodies, and see this as a as a big wave to ride and, and go out there and surf the tsunami and I guarantee you and you already know this I'm guaranteeing this to you my brothers and sisters that the economic the political and the cultural changes that are going to take place in the next three years are going to make the last 15 years seem relatively small be prepared listen to Alex Jones have some good food buy some gold and silver Hang out with your friends who are aware of this stuff. Love your brothers and sisters. And just keep joy in your heart. You're absolutely right, George, because, again, it's one thing to point out the evil and then know that we have power over it. Some people see the show and think, well, this is just scary. No, we're admitting how serious it is, yeah. but knowing that truth and justice and light is a total antidote to this and has so much more power than evil Evil only has power when we lay down to it, so we need to face the truth, make preparation for it, and realize we're in a very important time. George, great I to see you. I love you. You going to come out and hang out with me? I, I'd love to. Okay, we're, you we're, will. <laughs> i got to keep battling the roller. Okay. Hold on one second. I'll say bye to you during the break. Folks, speaking of fear, I get criticized all the time. Hey, Planet X is going to kill us in 2000, kill us in 2003, Nibiru, uh, Common Ellen, and there's always something new going to kill us. And, and this is how the global engineers sell fear to New Agers and also people that are secular and, and who aren't spiritual at all. That, you know, they say, hey, it's the end of the world. No, it's actually a new beginning. If you look at the Mayan calendar, any of it, it means a new time begins. It doesn't mean the end of the world. I've actually gone down there and talked to the Mayan archaeologists themselves. So, so even if you believe in that, it's a lie. They tell the Christians it's the end of the world. The rapture isn't even in the Bible, okay, until after Christ comes back. It's not there. They want to teach you the game's over, that you're not a player in it, because the end is coming. And if they can stall you with comets and runaway planets and all this garbage that they pre-programmed in cartoons and movies for children, then you won't feel like you have power in this universe, and so you won't be active and be involved. So coming up after this break, we're going to look at this whole uh, disaster end of the world economy. Who was that? I, I thought I recognized somebody there. <laughs> we're going to be right back. Stay with us. Then we got a guest coming on uh, who is concerned about uh, Ellen. And, and uh, who knows? It's just that I, I've, I've heard of so many dozens of these and, 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 and that every time it doesn't kill us, and I'm proven right, They've just got a new one that's coming to kill us, and somehow I'm bad because I'm telling you we have hope, we can win, and uh, there's a lot of forces out there that are a lot bigger than us. We'll be right back. Stay with us. It's InfoWars Nightly News. The establishment called him extreme and unelectable. They said he was the wrong man for the job. It's why a young Texan named Ron Paul was one of only four congressmen to endorse Ronald Reagan's campaign for president, believing in Reagan's message of smaller government and lower taxes. After Reagan, Senator Al Gore ran for president, pledging to raise taxes and increase spending, pushing his liberal values. And Al Gore found a cheerleader in Texas named Rick Perry. 
Rick Perry helped lead Al Gore's campaign to undo the Reagan revolution. 